Hello, it's Matthew here, and we're going to look at question 9, which is worth 50 marks. So we're shown a graph that represents a model that's used to predict the value of Brian's new car. It assumes that the value of the car depreciates by a fixed percent every year. So that means that the value of the car reduces by the same percentage every single year. So now let's have a look at the first part of the question. So the first part of the question wants us to write down the initial value of Brian's car, which is V0, and the value of Brian's car after one year, which is V1. So now let's have a look at the graph. The initial value of the car is going to be after zero years, so that's after zero time has passed, and that's going to be where zero is on the x-axis, which is right here. So now we have to find out where the graph hits x equal to zero, which is actually the same thing as the y-axis, x equal to zero. So we have to find out where the graph hits that line there, and we can clearly see it hits it up here at the top at 30,000 euro. So that means the initial value of Brian's car is 30,000 euro. Now let's have a look at the value for V1, which is the value of Brian's car after one year. This time it's going to be where T is equal to one as one year has passed. So that's going to be where the graph hits this line here. And we can clearly see that the graph hits the line X equal to one at this point right here. And now we have to find the corresponding value on the Y axis, which is the horizontal axis. And we can see that that's equal to 24,000. So that means that the value of Brian's car after the first year is 24,000. So that's our answer for A part one, which was worth five marks. Now let's have a look at A part two. So this wants us to show that the value of the car will reduce by 20% in the first year. So the percentage change in anything is given by the change over the original amount by 100. So we know that the original amount was 30,000 and the value of the car after the first year was 24,000. So to find the change, so that's the difference between the value in the car in the first year and the second year, we can just take them away from each other. And 30,000 minus 24,000 leaves us with 6,000. So therefore the change is 6,000. So the change is 6,000 over the original amount of 30,000. Multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. And we can do this on our calculator. And that gives us 20. So that's equal to 20%. And that's what we have to show. So we've shown that the value of the car reduces by 20% in its first year. So that was A part 2, which was worth 5 marks as well. Now let's have a look at B part 1. This wants us to write a formula for VT. And we have to use the fact that the value decreases by 20% every year. So here we're asked to write a formula for V at T using the fact that the value decreases by 20% every year. And V at T gives us the value of Brian's car after T years. So the first thing I'll say is that the value decreasing by 20% every year is the most important thing we're told here. As if you reduce something by 20%, you're left with 80% of the original value. So rather than finding 20% of 30,000 and taking it away, you can simply find 80% of 30,000 and that will give you your answer for the value of Brian's car after the first year. So that will also give you 24,000. So we're going to use this fact now in our formula V is T so that we can write a formula for the value of Brian's car after T years. So we can say that V at T is equal to, and we know that the value of Brian's car at the start is 30,000 and it's going to reduce by 20% every year. In other words, the value in year two will be 80% of the value in year one. So every year, you can just multiply the previous value by 80%. That can look something like this. And then you get year three is 80% of year two, and so on. So if the value at the start is 30,000, I can multiply that by 80%, which is the same thing as 0.8. And that will give me the value of the car in after the first year. Now, if I wanted to get the value of the car after the second year, I would just multiply it by 0 0.8 again. And after the third year, it would be multiplied by 0 0.8 again. And you would just keep multiplying it by 0 0.8 for depending on how many years Brian has had the car for. Now, rather than writing out 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 every single time, we can write this more simply. When you're multiplying numbers by each other, the same number by each other. An easier way to do that is just to put it to the power of whatever amount of times you want to multiply it by itself. 
So for example, if it was 0 0.8 by itself three times, that's the same thing as 0 0.8 cubed. Now, the problem here is that we don't know after how many years we're looking for, it's just after t years. So we're gonna put it to the power of t. If it was after five years, put it to the power of five, after seven years, it'd be to the power of seven and so on, but it's after t years, so we just put 0 0.8 to the power of t. And that makes it a lot more compact. And now depending on how many years have passed, you just put that in for t. So for example, after two years, you'd put in two for t, and that will give you the value of Brian's car after two years. So that's the answer for b part one. V at t is equal to 30,000 by 0 0.8 to the power of t. Now let's have a look at part two. Here we're asked to work out the value of Brian's car after four years according to the model. So our model was V of t is equal to 30,000 by 0 0.8 to the power of t. So now I'm going to find V of four, which is the value of Brian's car after four years because t is going to be equal to four now. And now I can pop this into my calculator. So now you have to be careful how you input this into your calculator. So you can type in 30,000 then in brackets 0 0.8 and then uh, 0 0.8 to the power of 4. So make sure the brackets are only around 0 0.8 and don't put another set of brackets around the 30,000 and after the 0 0.8. So just make sure it's exactly like I have there on the screen and then click equals to, to get your answer, which is 12,288. So that means after four years, the value of Brian's car is 12,288 euro. And B part two there was worth 10 marks, with B part one being worth five marks. Now let's look at the next part of the question, part C. So previously, the model assumed that the value of the car decreased by a fixed percentage every year. So that means that the percentage was just 20%. It lost 20% of its value every single time. This time, in this particular model, it's assuming that the value of the car reduces by a fixed amount every year. So that means that the value of the car actually decreases by the same number in euros every single year. So for example, it goes down, you know, 3,000 every year, or it goes down 5,000 every year, but the amount that it goes down does not change every year. So the actual figure it's going down does, does not change every single year. So we're asked to draw a line on the diagram above that passes through the first two points on the graph with whole number of values of t, which is t is equal to zero and t is equal to one. So we have to continue your line so continue or line, I should say, until it reaches the horizontal axis, which is the x-axis. So let's try that now. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark the first two points on the graph with whole number values of t. That's going to be t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1. So when t is equal to 0, the value of the car is 30,000. And when t is equal to 1, so that's after the first year, the value of the car is 24,000. And that coordinate is represented right here. Now we're told to draw a straight line through both of those points down to the horizontal x-axis. So let's try that now. So the graph should look something like that. However, yours on the paper should be more accurate than my one here on the screen. See up here at the top, it's just slightly missing the top point there. And that's just due to the ruler on the screen not being very accurate compared to the one you should have in real life on the paper. So just be careful of that. So now let's have a look at C part two. So here we're asked to estimate the age of Brian's car when its value is zero euro, according to the new model, which is represented by the pink line on the graph. So let's have a look. So the value of Brian's car is zero along this point here. So that means you have to find out where the pink line hits this yellow line right here. As the value of the car is zero euro anywhere along that yellow line there, and we can clearly see it hits the yellow line right here. And that's after five years. So therefore, the value of Brian's car is zero after five years. So it has a lifespan of five years under this new model. Now, all of part C, part one and part two together are worth a combined five marks. So that's my answer for part C. Now let's have a look at part D. And we're told that Ava buys a new car that has a price of 19,445 euro. She pays 30% of the price as a deposit and she makes repayments of 2697 euro every month for the next three years. And then at the end of the three years, she pays an additional lump sum of 7,389 euro, and we're asked to work out the total cost of the car for Ava. So the first thing to do is we're gonna work out the price of the deposit. So the deposit is 30% of the price she bought the car for. So that's 19,445 by 30%. And we can work this out on our calculator. 
I can do 19,445 by 30%. To get the percentage sign, you click Shift, which is up here in the top left-hand corner. And then you click the answer button that has the yellow percentage sign above it for the percentage. And then you should have 19,445 by 30%. And that's equal to 11,667 over two, but we want that as a decimal. So we click this S to D sign right here. And that gives us it in a decimal, which is 5,833.5 euro. So therefore the deposit was 5,833.5 euro. So that's the amount of the deposit. Now let's work out the total value of the repayments, which were made each month for the next three years. So the first thing to point out is that they're met each month for three years. So because they're monthly and we're told it's in three years, they're met for every month in three years, we have to find out how many months are in three years. So there's obviously 12 months in the year and they're being repaid for every month for three years. So it's 12 by three and that's equal to 36. So that means there's 36 monthly repayments to be met. So if it's 206.97 that's been repaid every month and it's been repaid for 36 months, we can multiply 206.97 by 36. Once again, we can do this on our calculator. And once again, we click S to D to get rid of the fraction and to get it in as a decimal. And that gives us 7,450.92. And that's the total value of the 36 monthly repayments. And then plus there's an additional lump sum of 7,389. So now we have to add the deposit, which is the 5833.5, with the repayments, which is 7,450.92, and also the lump sum, which is 7,389. So now let's add all of these together. So we can do this on our calculator. So it's 5833.5 plus 7450.92 plus 7389. And that gives us an answer of 20,673 euro 0.42. So the total cost of the car for Ava is 20,673.42 euro. So that's the answer for part D, which is worth 10 marks. Now let's have a look at the final part of the question, part E. So we're told that Ava drives her car home from the garage, which is 12 kilometers. It usually is driven at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. However, on this particular day, there's roadworks and her average speed is only 40 kilometers per hour for the journey. So we have to work out the percentage increase in the time it takes Ava to drive home because of these roadworks. Now, percentage increase is the same formula as percentage change. We're just working out the change, putting it over the original amount, which in this case will be the time it usually takes her to get home and multiplying it by 100. So before we work out the change, we have to work out the original. So first of all, let me remind you of the formula for time and time is equal to distance over speed. Neither of these formulas are in the formula book, so you should learn them off. And if you don't know them, I would write them down and try and learn them off. So the original time it would have taken would have been the distance, which is 12 kilometers over her original speed, which is 60 kilometers per hour. So it would have been 12 over 60. And we can put this into the calculator to work it out what it is. So click fraction and then 12 over 60, that's equal to one over five or 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 hours. So now I wanna work out how much that is in minutes. So to do that, I can multiply 0 0.2 by 60 as there's 60 minutes in an hour. So I can just multiply my answer by 60. And that means that there's 12 minutes. So normally it takes her 12 minutes to drive home from the garage. So that was the original. And I will do it with the roadworks. So it's still 12 kilometers. The distance between her house and the garage has not changed. However, now she's driving slower. So she's only going 40 kilometers per hour with the roadworks. So it's a similar thing again, except this time it's 12 over 40. And that's equal to three over 10 or 0 0.3 hours. And to work out what that is in minutes, we can multiply it by 60. So multiply answer by 60, which is 18. So now that we have the original time it would have taken her and the time it takes her with roadworks, we can work out the change, put it over the original, and multiply it by 100. So the change is going to be 18 minus 12 as it now takes 18 with roadworks 
and it only took 12 before without roadworks so it's 18 minus 12 which is obviously six minutes so her time that it took her to get home increased by six minutes so we're putting six over the original amount which is 12 multiplying it by 100 and this will give us the answer we can clear the calculator type in fraction and then six over 12 and multiply by 100 to get us uh, to get it as a percentage and that gives us 50 so the answer is 50 percent so it took her 50 percent longer to get home when there was roadworks compared to when there wasn't roadworks and that entire party was worth 10 marks that's the last part of question 9 and the end of the video thank you very much for watching and i hope i helped